older women coping hard and raging because they hit the wall and men have left them behind. Men who date significantly younger women only. When someone's 18, early 20s, a woman, and she's still figuring out herself, and then the guy's 40 plus, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, where is your headspace at? Okay, if How it's about you get your headspace out of their headspace, right? And let them mind their own business, and you mind your own business, and get out of their relationship. I know you don't consent to their dynamic, but the two of them inside of it, they do consent. It's kind of funny to imagine you got like a 40 year old and a 20 year old walking down the street, you know, 40 year old man, 20 year old woman walking down the street and then you get an older harpy like this walking along and her being real nosy and like looking into their dynamic and thinking, well, where is his head space at? What do they have in common? Like, it's funny. They don't, I guess they don't realize how they come off. They come off very bitter when they talk about this subject, when they talk about men dating younger women. And it's kind of funny how involved these women like to get with that dynamic. But do you think they give a shit if they see an older woman with a younger man? They'll just look at it and be like, oh, okay, interesting. But when it comes to an older man and a younger woman, they're like, what, what, what do you have in common? Where's your headspace at? What do you guys talk about? And there's recently, I think, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. He's 40, and he was seen dating a 19-year-old, I think. And of course, you know, the women on Twitter are enraged over this. But me, I, I like to watch them seethe. It's physical, that's one thing. But I, I also have a sensitivity to that of power dynamics and because the younger person is still developing their fucking frontal cortex. I've talked about this online and I get a lot of pushback. Like, you're just old and bitter. I'm like, I- You do come off that way. At the time, did not know better. I didn't know what I was giving up. If the old, possibly the younger person doesn't have that yet and if you take that advantage of that or use that to your advantage i'm not cool with that and i do feel like a lot of men who do date super young like that they do oh okay so then let's raise the age of adulthood for women to 30 then because that seems like what these women really want like all right let's not allow them to vote at 18 19 20 21 22 i mean what age do you hey old lady at what age do you feel good when do your feelings start to feel better about the dynamic. Is it 25? Is it 30? Should we just remove their rights overall? Should we never like allow them to make decisions? You know, and I guess I am being a bit hyperbolic and taking things to the extreme, but you know, it's kind of annoying. It's just, look, if this is how we're going to treat these women as it, it's like, when you listen to these older women talk about these, these younger women, these 18, 19, 20 year olds, I would imagine that these, these, these teenagers, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, listen to older women like this. And they, they must get somewhat offended because basically what you're saying lady is that these women are just dumb dumb stupid don't know any better shouldn't be able to make their own decisions aren't really functioning adults and to me it's it's funny and it will never end and it's just it's one of those things that women don't like about men and specifically if you look at the culture these women are encouraged to put these things off you know dating and seeing men late till they're later in life so it would make sense why this frustrates them because they've been told that they should put these things off, finding a man, you know, that they should put it off until they're older. And then they also see that men don't like these older women. So they're kind of confused and perplexed. So I've got this pulled up and I think it fits this well. Men live longer if they marry a younger woman. Men are likely to live longer if they marry a younger woman. New research suggests a man's chance of dying earlier are cut by a fifth if their bride is between 15 and 17 years their junior, the risk of premature death is reduced by 11% if they marry a woman 7 to 9 years younger. This study also found that men marrying older women are more likely to die earlier. To die early, the results suggest that women do not experience the same benefits of marrying a toy boy or a sugar daddy. Wives with husbands, older or younger, by between 7 and 9 years, increase their chances of dying early by 20%. This rises to 30% if the age difference is close to 15 and 17 years. Scientists say the figures for men may be the result of natural selection, that only the healthiest, most successful older men are able to attract younger mates. Another theory is that a younger woman will care for a man better and therefore he will live longer. Plenty of reasons, but the study examined deaths between 1990 and 2005. On average in Europe, most men marry women around three years younger. So interesting study there. 
But this whole, you know, feminist thing where, oh, what's going on here with these men dating these younger women? I find it, I find it funny. I'm single. And you want to know why I'm single? Because I want to be. I don't want a man. I don't think I'm going to say anything on this one. I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't need a man to define me. You go, girl. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Men are frustrating. Ladies, we love them, but we got to admit they're frustrating at times. The white one hasn't found me yet. He's probably stuck in a tree somewhere calling in the, the fire department with an army of turtles. Yeah, that's what he's doing. I'm single because I want... Oh, you chose to be single? How clever. There's no need for a man to define you because... <laughs> Bro, dude, are you really going at her after that, dude? No, why is this even in here, man? Come on, come on, be better than that standards and constant rolling of the eyes. It's not really that you're liking a half-naked photo. Like, I don't expect you to become gay in a relationship with me. Hopefully not. That's happened to me before. I've had enough of that. It's about respect. Mm -hmm. You're saying not only to me, but to the world, I think this girl's hot and I'm letting her know in front of everybody. And it's embarrassing because girls check that and yeah. we talk about it. I'm sure we're not going to do this. We won't skip over the fact that you're giving them to your weight. Are you gay? Yeah, I mean, I see what she's saying, right? And it's like, I understand that. I understand where they're coming from. But this is also the same type of woman who wouldn't understand why her decisions, her behavior, the things she wears, the things she posts online can affect how her man feels. And, you know, if she was congruent, that'd be great. I hope she is. I hope she understands that when a man tells you what to wear and what you can and can't wear, hopefully she understands that it's kind of that, that same reason why she feels upset when her man likes a, a woman's picture with her ass out. It's really the same thing going on there, which is why he doesn't want you to, you know, walk around with your, your tits hanging out. It's all the same thing. Both, it's, it's embarrassing to both people, but for some reason I have a feeling she wouldn't understand that side of it, right? Not going to do that. So who is the other woman anyway? What? Hey there, decrepit old hag over the age of 18 here. Gonna talk about how this is an absolute myth and that men are not biologically hardwired to prefer young women. When oh, wow. Wow. She's really going to sit here and say this shit. She really does not understand how men... Wow. She's going to sit here and try to debunk men being just more drawn to younger women and being more attracted to them and finding them very attractive. It's like tight skin, no wrinkles, firm body. Well, what man would want that? Why would, why would he want that, right? That's... Let's debunk this. Say that wanting younger women is just in their DNA. What they're really saying is they want an excuse to be absolute creepers. They're also making an effort to hold on to... It's a good argument, right? Wow. She's really coming here with the facts. Last vestiges of power that they have left because women are continuing to encroach on all of the spaces that they once dominated and they are terrified to lose their unearned privilege and lose the little relevance that they have left. This myth has been perpetuated by evolutionary psychology, which... Oh, the feminists are starting to find out about ev evolutionary psychology. It was only a matter of time before these feminists started to try to debunk Evo Psych and started getting offended and trying to put a politically correct stamp on Evo Psych. I, I, I actually think that's going to get a lot worse in the next 10, 20 years. They're going to attack that now. It's a widely criticized field because... They don't do a good job of distinguishing between environmental and cultural explanations. You know, it, you can tell that in an Evo psych, they do their best to not, like, upset women. A lot of these people, uh, if you, you know, read the books and you really look into it, they, they really try their best not to offend women. You can tell there's that, like, tone of really trying to present these facts without upsetting people. And... You know, I can understand that because the, the facts they're presenting are not congruent with the politically correct world that we live in. And this is why when women like this, these red haired, tattooed, bitter, you know, probably three dogs in her house, feminists get a hold of this shit. This is how they're going to react. Oh, it's they it's patriarchy. You know, it's toxic, blah, blah, blah. And this is what we this is what we see here things and adaptive evolutionary explanations for things and they don't stand up 
to the rigorous standards of traditional evolutionary biology when it comes to providing causal evidence. There was this dude, David Buss, who in the late 80s did this study where he looked at men and women across 37 countries and observed that... Don't let Michael Sartain get a hold of this clip. <laughs> He's gonna go off. You know, someone send this to Michael Sartain. And typically go for younger women, women typically go for older men. And he hypothesized that it was because men were seeking women of peak fertility. But what's interesting is he didn't apply this same mode of thought for women because men also lose fertility as they age. Every year after the age of 20, they're becoming less fertile. And a 40 year old dude will take at least two years to get a peak fertile woman pregnant. People that work in this field are often criticized for conflating what actually is with what they think. Hey man, the longer it takes, the better. That's more, that's more nuts you can bust without having to wrap it. That's not a bad deal. Ought to be. They observe a pattern. Sure I believe her. And then they make it fit a narrative that they already believe. And this is why you'll often see evolutionary psychologists advocating against social change and why Dr. Buss is often seen with Jordan Peterson chatting on the internet. The really interesting thing about those 37 countries that Buss studied is that if you look at them over time, you track mating strategies and the ages at which people are- is, th is this feminist really trying to debunk David Buss right now? To one another. And you compare that to the country's UN Gender Equality Index score. As gender equality rises, the age gap shrinks. That idea that men are naturally hardwired to go for younger women starts to disappear almost as quickly as Myron's hairline. So when- All right, all right, I see what's going on here now. Traditional gender roles are stripped away, people are getting together closer- it, It's so upsetting that this is this is our women. It, it's, it's disgraceful, it makes me upset. These are the American women. These are our women, you guys. These are the women that represent America and our beliefs. She votes, right? She votes, unfortunately age because they have more in common, right? They're at similar life stages and there are other things influencing what makes a good partnership. So when shitty dudes are talking about youth being the number one shitty thing dudes. they look for in a woman, what they're doing is try to devalue women's accomplishments because we're working on outpacing them in every category and they are scared. So they're going to tell you your career doesn't matter, your education. Hold on. You're a feminist, right? Don't you believe that women make less money than, than men? What are you talking about? doesn't matter, your ambition doesn't matter, your wealth doesn't matter, and what's more important is that you're young and submissive. And what better way for them to try and sell this but by telling you that it's just a matter of biology and it can't be changed. They want to scare women and make them think that if they're over the age of 25, like all male attention will simply vanish. Unfortunately for them, the majority of women are waking up to the fact that life is a lot better without problematic men. And so many women are realizing that y'all simply aren't worth the trouble. And the data supports this. Single childless women are the happiest in society. They are happier being without men that treat- Yeah, I mean, women love that. They love that stat. I haven't looked into it too much, but it's like personally cool. Then go be single and childless. Like, okay. If you, if you guys want to be single and childless so bad, that that's fine. Just go do that, right? Go do that. And don't really try to like convince all of us how happy you are when you're 35 and, and having your mimosas and waking up hungover after a day out on the town with your with your girlfriends and then you all die alone with no children and your grandmother looks at you and she's like, what the fuck happened? What what got into your, your mind? Like, why are you this way? I don't know. I just... Okay, I hear that all the time. Single, childless, unmarried, women not married are so fucking happy. It's like, well, then why are you all on SSRIs? Like, what's going, like, what's going on with that? It is weird how feminism, and we have, we have this rise in feminism and single and childless women, and yet SSRI usage amongst women just like you, lady, white women at your age and everything are just almost, there's a lot of you on SSRIs, antidepressants, anti-anxiety. It's like, okay, you wanna mention that study. How about you mention how many of you are on SSRIs? Let's talk about that as well. Like dogs or are looking for replacement mommies. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the fact that many of these men also suffer from crippling self-esteem issues. And the only way that they can feel more like a man and more like they have something of value is if they are controlling, manipulating, and abusing someone else. And often, that's women.
Researchers have found that men naturally like younger women. This is because most men find it beautiful when women are in their prime, which means they're in the best shape of their lives. They also have the most eggs and are the most fertile when they are at their best. It's so not really up for argument. It's funny that this woman literally just tried to debunk men liking younger women. And then you know what? This woman would also be super inclined to like shit on men and say that they're pervs who are like who go after young women, right? Like she'll she's she'll on one hand say that men aren't naturally wired or programmed to like younger women. And then she also will use that as a like a slight to men by saying they're creeps who just go after younger women. That's when the babies are most likely to be born healthy and without any issues. People over 30 and especially over 35 who are pregnant are thought to be having an elderly pregnancy. This means that the babies are more likely to have health problems. It's not true that guys reach their peak fertility at a certain age. That might change in their 60s, but guys in their 60s are having kids. History shows that women rarely had children after age 40, especially when it comes to kings. Today, they can only do C-sections and other procedures thanks to advances in technology. Toxins in food and the surroundings are the only reason men lose their fertility. Over time, these toxins build up in the body like balls and lower the number of sperm. But it's not normal for that to happen. Everyone's coming out as like having no hobbies and interests and I love it. I've been waiting for this moment. Whole life, I've always been like, what do people do in their free time if they don't need something from Target? Mm. That's the only <laughs> thing I know as my culture, as my activity. I, I'm just so grateful that that's becoming a mainstream acceptable thing to share. Being stuck on the couch or bed with nothing to do is the best thing in the world. Watch as you slowly turn into a veggie. What if you didn't wait on TikTok for other people to say they don't have any hobbies? Instead, you looked for one yourself? It's not even hard. Do something that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be crocheting or taking the bus like that other crazy person. It can be anything you love. Here, here we have a woman who, she's not young, I wouldn't say, you know, and she's not old. She's maybe in her mid-20s. But this is a woman that a woman like this would deem probably approvable, right? She, would, she wouldn't be, be that offended if she saw an older man with a woman of this age. But this woman here just admitted to everybody that her her personality is target. So it's like, as these women get older, it, does anything really change that much? Like there was a video coming out of whatever podcast of this woman who was obviously older, maybe late 30s, and she wouldn't concede that two plus two equals four. And I'm like, look, this is, this is a, you, you ladies don't change that much. It seems like there's a maturity cap quite early right and and maybe you guys can break through it when you finally hit mid 40s or whatever but it, it just it really doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of maturing going on honestly like they don't it doesn't seem like they change that much this older woman wouldn't say two plus two equals four that's that's maturity right it, it's strange to me so i mean this woman here said target is her personality this other woman doesn't know but two plus two equals four this raging feminist here who's obviously older really doesn't want to acknowledge like basic truths. It's like these are our women. These are the mature women we're supposed to want to date. Like this is clearly, you know, an older mature woman. She doesn't seem that pleasant. You know, this is clearly an older mature woman. She said her personality is, is basically target. I wouldn't say she's that old, but, you know, maybe mid to late 20s. We're supposed to want to date these these chicks, these feminists. I'm, I'm good, man. And it seems like as these women get older and they stay single, it's probably when they really start to embrace feminism. So they get less desirable in that aspect as they get older, for sure. So, And the women who probably aren't feminists, well, they're the ones who are open to dating younger and settling down and committing and don't insist on putting off that sort of area of their life for a career and the boss babe lifestyle. And so you can pretty much look at the women who are older and single and then they start dating. Well, these are probably the same women who kind of have feminist mindsets anyways. So, but I'm going to leave the video there. So if you enjoyed that, go ahead and drop a like and a subscription and I'll see you later. Bye.